Praise the Lord. Praise it's good to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. We get ready to begin our devotion service, and uh, last night I went a little bit over, so I'll try to stay in the rain tonight and give you time to say something tonight. Amen. Okay. I'm going to do a scripture here. And man, how you know you way back on the back of the house, way by sitting in the back. I might ask you to give me a prayer, okay? okay. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Today, at home all day this morning, I, I said I'm going to sing this song tonight. <laughs> I got a practice on it. Just didn't come out right. <laughs> <laughs> I think I must be in the wrong room or something. <laughs> I practiced in the other room. Still didn't come out right. <laughs> Took me a little nap in the middle of the day and come out and say I practice again. It still won't come out right. <laughs> but I ain't gonna tell you like some people, Lord told me to do it. Lord didn't tell me to sing the song. Man. But where I sound, myself told me don't mess with it. <laughs> but I'm still gonna give him a praise tonight. Amen. 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 I, I want you to listen to and I'm going to tell you something. I, I, if I was singing my song, they used to sing a song with a small, I know uh, uh, Mother Lackman, Lord Revive Us Again. Uh, Mother John, you know that song? You don't know that song? I, 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 I don't know if it's in the back of the song. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> I, I, even that, I, I even got me a hymn book to the door. And, 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 and I, I got the handbook and I read that one enough. So I found the song, I played the song, that still didn't help me none. But you know what? The Lord revived us. That's what the song said. Hallelujah. Thy glory revive us again. So my scripture tonight, it comes from the debate of Psalm 85. And begin at that verse. Verse 5. Let you say, Will thou be angry with us forever? Will thou draw out thy anger to all generations? And I could just read verse 6 and stop there. Will thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Israel had just returned back to home. And they want to know uh, all the disobedience, all the things they had did wrong. Lord, will you revive us again? And I, I just want to say this, and, and, and I'm not going to take all the time. Of uh, all what we've been through in the last couple of years, Lord, revive us. And if I could say anything to our member, Lord, revive us and remove that fear of giving you a praise. Revive us. That we can stand boldly and say, Lord, I thank you. Revive us that, Lord, that I can hallelujah to thy glory. Hallelujah again. Hallelujah. And folks, you come with, with the prayer. Come on, I'll just say it real loud. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Revive us again. Revive us again. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we come to you, O oh God, your children, O oh God, just to tell you thank you, O oh God. O oh God, we come to you right now, O oh God, asking you to revive us once again, O oh God. O oh God, we come to you tonight, O oh God, asking you to remove any distractions, O oh God. O oh God, that we could be focused on your word, O oh God. O oh God, as the man of God, bring forth your word, O oh God. O oh God, allow it, O oh God, to be planted on the inside, O oh God. And for that, God, we just want to tell you thank you, O oh God. O oh God, we thank you right now, O oh God, for all that you've done and all that you're going to do, O oh God. O oh God, if we had 10,000 tones, we couldn't thank you enough, O oh God. O oh God, but we want to just tell you thank you. O oh God, we bless your holy name, O oh God. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We thank you, Father, for that prayer and our devotion service and now open that 
You may have a song, a testimony, whatever, to lay on your heart, to, uh, you know how you want to bless the Lord. And you know me, I would bless the Lord. I don't care where I'm at. I'll give him a praise. I don't mind saying, Lord, I love you. I thank you. I tell you like that, but the ten reasons why I praise him. And guess what? He did the same thing again this morning. Praise the Lord. Ten times. And he woke me up again. Yeah. So, so that be anybody will pray. Anybody uh, tell on anything that the Lord lay on your heart. It's, it, it's open now. Amen. I do give honor to my Lord and Savior through the head of my lives, Pastor Lewis. Um, Reverend Walker. <laughs> to each and every one in the house, truly it is a blessing just to be back this Saturday night of revival. Mm -hmm. And I just thank God for just allowing me to, to be here because I realized it could have been the other way. But but God has been so good and so great. Yes. I just can't tell how good God has been. And I know he's been good to all of us because we are alive. We're here today and we're alive. You know, as we laid down last night, we didn't know whether we were going to see the day or not. But... The, but God, grace and mercy, mm -hmm. he allowed us to see another day. Amen. And truly, I thank you for it. I just thank you for everything he done. Thank you for what he's going to do. I just ask y'all continue praying for me, and I'll pray for you the best I know how. Amen. 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 Let, let me back up a step. You know, sometimes we get we get always, I don't know what you call but I do get rep to my Lord and say we didn't cry for being here. I do get rep to my pops, too. Dr. Walker to the minister uh, over to my left. I didn't get his name, but it, either way, I, I, I get rough to all day. I get rough to all of you. We just come back to our second night of our revival again. So if you have whatever the Lord left in your heart, you may do so. We still have time. I give honor to God for um, all he's done, um, give reference to Pastor Lewis, um, Reverend Walker. The other minister. Um, as many of you know, my daughter um, gave birth to my sixth grandchild, but um, he was rushed, um, airlifted to do. Um, the doctors have been in. Every test that they ran um, has came back negative. He keeps losing his breath, but you know, we know God. We, we stand um, firm on our faith. We know that um, God didn't bring us this far to leave us. Um, so we're just going to continue to trust in him. We do ask that you continue to pray. Um, continue to pray for her. Pray for myself to be able to encourage her along the way. But I just give God um, glory because even in the midst of this, I can still see him working. Amen. 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 Yeah, be so good. Just don't like that. I'm not going to put you on the spot. <laughs> 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 Intelligently, or love God intelligently, and if you're being intelligent 
about loving God, then you're going to know that you need to praise him. So when you get to a point of a service like this here, if you don't do nothing but say amen, amen or hallelujah, then you know that you're doing what he done told you you need to do. You need to love God intelligently. And our praises need to be consistent. Yes. And so that means you don't wait from first Sunday to third Sunday Amen. before you praise Amen. him. You Amen. got to praise him all of the time. Every time you get a chance, you got to try to send some praises up to God. And you know, you can't just praise him when there's certain folks that say praise God and use it praise God. You got to praise him all the time for yourself because it's all about you and the Lord. And that's loving God intelligently. But I am so glad to be in the service. Amen. 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 Get to our praise, get to our love. Praise the Lord, the blessing come down. Amen. I hear joy when I think of God. What He's done for me. See, see, you know the 
know people that know you, those that you work with, those that I could see it on faith and hear she from Melbourne Chapel at my other church too. And I could see it on faith that I know she was going to say more. She certainly did. And there, there'll be no, if not, let's see, 715. Dr. Phil Wolf, did somebody have another song? Did you read? Another testimony?
Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Come to your feet as the congregation leads us in song. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to care. Chapel on this second night of uh, revival. Um, as it's always been stated, you know, you didn't come here by happenstance. You came here with a purpose. So I want to welcome you all here tonight or any other time that our doors of this church are open. You are so, so welcome. Amen. 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 Now we're going to have the presentation of our guest evangelist. This man is no stranger to us. And I do want to honor my pastor, Pastor Lewis, Minister Howard, um, another minister back here, Reverend Grant, and uh, Dr. Walker, our guest evangelist. Dr. Walker has, you know, I said I'm not going to read his bio because it's in the book. 
but he has been one who, when he preached, has opened up hearts and minds to begin to seek and desire the Lord because he makes you think, he makes you wonder, he makes you consider your ways. And we are just so thankful that he has taken time out of his busy schedule because if you know him, his schedule is always full. But he took time to come by and share with us and, and, and leave some inspirational words to encourage us and rebuild us and restore us as we travel along this journey. And so we're just so thankful that we're, he's here. We're not going to delay the time. We're going to ask the congregation to give us a selection. And then the next voice you will hear will be none other than Dr. Timothy Walker Sr. Uh, from Lewisburg, Walnut Grove, and Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church is Jerusalem is in Emporia, Virginia. None other than Dr. Timothy Jerome Walker C. Amen. Grant, amen, come 
and he is a retired uh, pastor from from New York, uh, one that served as a state convention president in New York over 30 years of pastoring, and he retired and, and moved to Rocky Mountain. He uh, was our preacher in Virginia a couple of weeks ago, and one that God has anointed to declare uh, the word of God, and he called me and said that he may come one night Musician. He's on the keyboard tonight. We thank God for him. Come on, this praise. Yeah. 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 And it's a blessing just to be in the number one more time. Yeah. Yeah. All of the deacons and, and uh, the officers of the church, we praise God. We praise God for you. Those that are joining by conference call and uh, our Brother Butch, amen. Thank God for him. His ministry. I solicit your prayers again tonight. Wednesday uh, in the Baptist Church is usually our Bible study night. Amen. So I pray that you brought your Bibles tonight because that is what I will be preaching out of God's God's Word. And the Spirit of the Lord has led me to approach this night in an unconventional way as it relates to revival and have more of a Bible study feel, so I hope that you have your Bibles with you. And if you could just turn to the book of Colossians, this small epistle, four chapters in the New Testament, you'll find it housed between Philippians and 1st Thessalonians, uh, the epistle of Paul the Apostle to uh, the Colossians. And if you would just turn there, I'm not going to read in a particular verse, but I will be acknowledging several of the verses as the Spirit gives us uh, guidance. Please join me in a word of prayer. Father, we thank and praise you for the beauty of one more day. We thank you for life, health, and strength. And we praise you that you've allowed us to assemble again for the express purpose of lifting your holy and divine name. We ask now to open up our understanding and allow us to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. My prayer is that you would use this broken vessel to declare your divine word. Lord, you get all of the honor, the glory, and the praise. Anoint the ears and hearts of this waiting congregation and allow us to hear what you would have us to learn. Be glorified is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 On this second evening of revival, I want to use for a theme or a subject tonight uh, these words, God already knows. Amen. Amen. God already knows. Amen. If you don't mind uh, repeating those words after me, God already knows. God already knows. can embrace that fact, it causes us to, uh, to move in a way that we are asking God to take full control and we have no problem uh, desiring to follow him, to obey him, to lean and depend totally upon him if we know he already knows. Yeah. Yes. Now, we've come asking God to revive our hearts, to revive our spirits, and revive our minds. And if we are serious about revival, we need to look to the one and the only one that can revive us. Revival cannot be preached up. It has to be sent down from God himself. If one 
is going to qualify for bankruptcy, they have to first of all admit that they're broke. If we are going to be admitted into a hospital, vital care, or the area hospitals, we have to admit that we're sick. If we desire to make heaven our home, we got to first of all admit that without God, we are hell bound. If we are going to be revived again, church, we have to come to the realization that there are some areas in our lives that need improvement. We need revitalization. We need renewal. We need revival. Well. So tonight, I'm on assignment to share with us that God already knows that we need to be revived. Amen. He already knows how we operate in our churches. Amen. That should be his church. Yeah. I think I need to say that again. He already knows how we operate in our churches that should be his church. Come on, yeah. Yeah. All right. There are some traditions and some things that we are doing, and so was the case in the life of the Colossian church. It was in this church, in the Colossian church, where Paul writes them this short epistle. I want to share with us tonight that Paul never went, went to Colossae. Hmm. Paul did not establish that church as he did so many others that we find in the New Testament. As a matter of fact, when Paul wrote this letter, Paul was locked up in a Roman jail. Hmm. Amen. When he wrote the letter, he was locked up, incarcerated, in a, in a Roman jail. And I want us to sort of try to wrap our minds, our spiritual minds, around getting a letter from a locked up preacher. Mm. <laughs> well, Amen. I wish I had some witnesses. Right getting a letter from a locked up preacher. How would Anderson Chapel fare, <laughs> Amen, if you got a letter from a locked up preacher? Well, well, I'll tell you how you would fare because most of us don't uh, hear our pastors when they're not locked up. <laughs> Paul is incarcerated. He, he, he is persecuted for righteousness sake. Amen. Not prosecuted, persecuted for righteousness sake. But he hears of the church in Colossae. He hears about their love one for another. He hears about them trying to hold up the bloodstained banner. He, I don't know how he hears it because they did not have cell phones, Facebook, and Instagram in that day. Amen. Thank you, Marvin Gaye. I didn't have them in my notes, but Marvin Gaye said he must have heard it through the grapevine. <laughs> He must have heard that this church was striving, trying, that this church that had a uh, few members, but they were strong in faith. Mm. And I, I want to tell us, my brothers and sisters, we got to stop tripping about the number of members that we have because God is not concerned about our numbers in a way. Man, he's concerned about us not counting folk, but counting on him. Mm. Amen. Gideon will help me to tell you, a whole lot of us got too many folk in the way. If we make an announcement tonight, <clears throat> those of you that are in Anderson Chapel, if you're scared, go on home. Come on now. <laughs> if you're scared of being uh, on the front line for the master, if you're scared of being called a Christian, Amen. Not calling yourself a Christian, but being called a Christian, go on home, my grandma. Go on home. 
Amen. Gideon said he had 32,000, 22,000 packed up on that one announcement alone. And then with 10,000 left, God said, you still got too many. And Gideon thought he was not adequate, but God told him, you got too many. He said, let me test them. I'm going to see how many are filled with self-aggrandizement, how many are filled with self and forget that they are on the battlefield for the Lord. And I'll test them myself, take them down to the water, and whoever laps like a dog, whoever pulls that water up to their face so they can look around, you set them on one side. But whoever takes this time of uh, temporary refreshment and just indulges and put their heads down in the water, you take them on the other side because I can't use them. They were thinking more about themselves and forgot that they were in a battle. Right. We've got to stop counting numbers and start counting on God. Right. And so, so Paul writes this letter from the Roman jail and he, he writes to the church at Colossae, and first of all, he says uh, in verse 1, I hope you have your Bibles open, Paul, this is the King James rendering, uh, chapter 1, verse 1, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. He lets the record be straight. Paul says, I didn't call myself. You know, I didn't call myself. I'm not serving a, a, a particular church. I, I am not bound by any denomination. I am a slave for the master. I am an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. And those of us that say we are leaders of God's church, we need to understand that our allegiance should be to God first. Oh, amen. amen. If we find ourselves trying to please folk, uh, we'll be treading lightly when it comes to preaching God's word. Oh, we'll be afraid to preach some things because maybe some charter members, it walks down their street. But when we know that we're standing for God, come hell or our water, we are going to say what God tells us to say. Right. Amen. 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 He says, I'm, I'm an apostle by, by the will of God. And he talks to this church and he tells them about their faith. He says, verse 3, I'm always giving thanks to God the Father uh, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm praying for you always since I heard of your faith in Christ and your love which you have to all the saints for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. And for those that are Bible readers, you know that trilogy, trilogy is something that we've heard before. Faith, hope, and love. Yeah. Paul knows the importance if we are going to be Bible believers and followers of Christ. He knows the importance of embracing faith because without faith it's impossible to please God. He knows the importance of having hope because you can be up, living, moving around, breathing, but if you have lost hope, you are the walking dead. Amen. He knows about love in Corinthians. He says that love is the greater of these three because love covers a multitude of sin. So he talks about faith, hope, and love. And he, he sang from the jail cell. He said that I, I heard about you. I, I'm praying. I'm praying for you. And, and he lifts this. But what Paul does in this uh, Colossian letter, Paul knows that the church of Colossian has some issues. He knows that there are those that are leaning on their personal pride. He knows that there are those that think they can work their way into the kingdom. He knows that there are those that have the religion of self-sufficiency. So he, he knows this, but what he does, Pastor Lewis, he does not address the problem. 
He gives the solution. All right. And we might as well admit it, amen, we have some major problems. We might not want to admit them. We might want to give the resume of our religious walk. You know how it is. When one gives a resume, they always highlight the high points. They don't tell you what God has brought them out of. They don't tell you the struggles they had. They tell you all about the high, they highlight the high points. And maybe that's why there's a major chasm in so many of our churches between the young people and old because once we get to a certain point in life, we forget about our Come PC. On Come on right. Right. And we look at our children as if we always, as if we've always been in church. Come on as if we've always had God on our minds. But we need to tell the truth, the whole truth, and right nothing but the truth. And so, so Paul, 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 he, he says, he says, I know, I know you have issues. I, I know that there are some that are putting most of their emphasis on being circumcised and outward expression. He says, but I'm, I'm going to share with you the solution to your problem. And the reason I'm going to share it with you is because God already knows. He already knows what we are grappling and wrestling. He already knows what's on our mind. He knows what's in our heart. He knows our mouths can say one thing and our hearts can be thinking something totally different. We can fool folk, but we can't fool God. This is what Paul, Paul is talking from experience, you understand? Because Paul had, he had an encounter with the master. And, and so uh, what Paul uh, does is, he does not put emphasis on the fact of them leaning and depending on circumcision and outward expression. He does not put the emphasis on them thinking they're working their way to glory. He gives the solution to their problem. The first thing that he deals with is he deals with the need for mature saints. Mm, come on now. God bless us walking and I, amen, 12 years ago, amen, when we were uh, 43 and 42, amen, I was 43 and she was 42, and he blessed us to have our first grandchild. All right. At 43, amen, I didn't want to be called granddad. <laughs> so I, I told uh, and then I said, I want grandkids to call me bruh. <laughs> she said, I don't really want to be called grandma at such an early age. They will call me Chi-Chi. <laughs> so that's what our grandchildren call us. We are blessed with five now. But I have learned something uh, while uh, being blessed to help raise grandchildren. Children can teach you a whole lot. Amen. Amen. Children are very honest. Amen. They, they have no filter. Amen. They are, they are very straightforward. They are, they'll tell you, yes, just how it is. But there's something about children. Children are childish. Amen. Amen. They they are childish and they have childish ways. Amen. They are they are selfish. Amen. I, I can give Taikei who's in the back. He can ask me, bro, can I have an apple? I say, sure. I'm gonna cut it up into four pieces. Amen. I'll take the skin off. I'll take the seeds out and I'll cut it up for you and put it on a platter. And he said, Thank you, bro. I'll walk out the room. I'll come back in the room and say, Taikin, can bro have a piece? He oh no. <laughs> this is my apple. A amen. Amen. Uh, children, children are childish. They are they they are selfish. Children, amen, they come to the table and they say uh, what they don't want to eat. Hmm. Amen. They tell the parents and the grandparents what they don't want and what they're going to eat. I don't know that I didn't come up in that day. I came up in the day, amen, when my mother and my grandmother put something on the plate, 
Amen. You either ate well on, on the plate or you didn't eat at all. Amen. Amen. But we live in a day now where children are, are so selfish. They tell the parents what they want to eat, where they want to go because they're selfish. Children always blaming other children. They can be just as guilty as can be. You can see them commit the infraction and you ask them what happened and they'll point the finger at somebody else. All right. yeah. Yeah. Um, um, um. Children need to be burped at an early age. If you don't burp them, they'll, they'll have, they, they might choke. Right. Amen. Right. If they're burped, if they're not burped. Now, y'all think I'm talking about my grandchildren. But no, I'm talking about church folk. Come on, mama. I wish I had a little bit. Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Church folk are selfish. Ask God for provision. God make a way out of no way. God open doors. And when he opens doors, and he says, oh, Lord, I thank you. Thank you, thank you. And then when he says, well, come on now. I cut your, 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 your apple up into ten pieces. Can you give me a little bit? Can you give me a slice? Amen. And I know it, right? But I just heard that mouse pee on God. Because when it comes to that, we don't want to give God the one that we pray to, the one that we ask for provision. When he says, all right, I gave you ten, just give me one. We say, oh, no, all oh, this is mine. Mm. If you can't see, I'll just wiggle your nose. I see. <laughs> amen. A a amen. They, uh, children want what they want to eat. Church folk, amen, some are child. I know y'all not in here, but, but there are some church folk, they're going to tell their spiritual parents what they want to eat. Mm. All right. Come on now. Yeah. Amen. Who they want to feed them. Uh -huh. yes. Amen. When the Bible says God gives pastors after his own heart that will feed his church with knowledge and understanding. And then instead of reading that part of the Bible, we want to say, well, no, nah, Lord, we're going to vote on what we want to eat. We're going to vote on who we want to feed. This is, this is the right message. Right? <laughs> and, 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 and when it comes, that's childish, y'all. And this is why Paul writes this letter to the church at Colossae because there were some things done that were childish. Hmm. Children always blame the other friend. I wish I could say it like I feel it, you know, my voice is a little weak. But always blaming somebody else. Instead of looking in the mirror, we spend our times looking out of the window. Yes. Always pass the blame to somebody else. I don't want to shock you tonight, but if everywhere you go, you smell cabbage, it just might be you. Instead of blaming everybody else, we've got to take a look in the mirror. Because God already knows. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, amen, amen. Children, you heard me talk about it. They need to be burned. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, amen. Y'all thought I was talking about my grandchildren. <laughs> no, there's a church folk. Every time they do something, if you don't burn, mm. if you don't pat them on the back, mm. if you don't massage them, mm. amen, they might just take their ball and try to go on. <laughs> So Paul recognizes this and he says God already knows what his church should be and if we're going to be under the umbrella of being the church of a living God, he says the first thing we need to do, we need to get some spiritual maturity. Amen. He said that's the first thing we need to do. We need to get some spiritual maturity because Christ is is preeminent. Christ is all that we need. And he deals with that on the back end. But he says, first of all, we got to start dealing with ourselves. Mm. Yeah. 
Got to get some spiritual maturity. And if you have your Bibles open, if you will look at Colossians chapter 1, uh, verse number 9, uh, what he says here is, For the cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will. He says, if we are going to be spiritual and mature, if we are going to be effective, if we are going to be relevant in this last day, if we are going to be a relevant church post-COVID, since God has made us to lie down in green pastures, he's given us the opportunity to get away from these four walls and recognize that he's not coming back for a building where the church is within us. He said the first thing we need to do as it relates to our spiritual maturity, we have to long to know what the will of God is. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Amen. You'll find it in verse 9. He says, Paul says, we got to know what the will of God is. We, we've got to long to know what God's will is because there will come a time where we come to a crossroad in life and we don't know which way to go. Yeah. There will come a time in our lives where we will come to a point where the burden is so heavy that we want to lean and depend on our own will. But Jesus would have me to tell you, when you come to that point where Gethsemane is straight ahead, you can't say, let this cup pass from me. Man, Jesus could have very well said this. He says, this looks like a bitter cup. I look in the cup. I see Tim's sin. I, I see I see uh, Malcolm's sin. I see Margaret's sin. I see Annette's sin. I see, I see Charlie's sin. I, 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 I see Dancy's sin. And when I look in that cup, even though I have not sinned, I say, Lord, please let this cup pass from me. Well, but then when you know the will of God, amen, something kicks in that causes you to say, nevertheless, not my will, but Lord, thy will be done. Because I need to tell us tonight, if we're in the will of God, whatever else comes, it really doesn't matter. And then if a fiery furnace comes, God knows how to insulate us. And if a lion den comes, he knows how to take the appetite of the lion. Amen. If a sea is in front of us, enemies behind us, and a, a, a mountain on each side, God knows how to open up the Red Sea. Yeah. If anybody here that knows when you're in God's will, it does not matter what else comes. Yeah. Yeah. So the first phase of our spiritual maturity, Paul writes from the jail cell and say, we have to desire the will of God. Amen. If we are going to be pleasing in his sight, if we are going to be comfortable in our own skin, if we are going to be pleasing and know that from hell to high water, I am on the Lord's side, we have to know what the will of God is. That's why Paul could write this letter while locked up. He wants them to know I'm locked up, but they can't lock God out. I believe there are some witnesses in Anderson yeah, Chapel yeah. that knows tonight, amen, it does not matter what my situation is, yeah. it does not matter what has happened around me, what really matters is what has happened in me. Yeah. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my yeah. life. Yeah. Gotta know, gotta know the will, the will of God. Yeah. Amen. And then, then Paul says, as he pins this from the jail cell, he says, the next step of our spiritual maturity, you'll find it in verse 9, he says, the next step of our spiritual maturity is not only that we might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, but the next phase is in verse 10, that we might, that we might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. In other words, he says, if we are going to be pleasing to God, if we are going to be authentic in our walk with the Master, we got to have a desire to please Him. When we work, we need to work as unto Him. 
One of the major issues that we have in our churches, especially in the rural area, we got too many people pleasers. Amen. Right. Right. Yeah. Hey, hey, got too many people pleasers. I remember, I remember 26 years ago when I first started pastoring. Amen. Went to a church that was very uh, affluent in the rural area. Had, had, had two noted millionaires in the church. Amen. Documented in the church on their own golf course. One of the few black owned golf courses. Amen. In North Carolina. Amen. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I've, I've got, they, came, they came to me. One of the brothers came to me. He was not a deacon at the time. But he said, he said you see this uh, you, see, you see this uh, fellowship hall? He said, we built this without a pastor. Hmm. <laughs> amen, amen. You know, I'm glad y'all invited me. I knew that. <laughs> he, 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 he looked me out on that and said, we built this without a pastor. I said, that, that's, that's good. That, that's, that's good. Hey, amen, this is a good church. He said, I knew what the church had, and I knew what I had. We built this one out, Pastor. I got this in there as a young preacher. And I said, I got to make this man a deacon. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I got to make this man a deacon. Amen. He talking that talk. Well. But you know what I was listening to? I was listening to what he said he had in his pocket, oh. not what he had in his heart. Oh. Yeah. 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 And there are too many of our churches, especially in the rural area, we have folks sitting in leadership positions that ought to turn in their resignation tonight. Did you hear what I said? Because they were put there for the wrong reason. Put there because they had influence in the community. Because their parents had land. Because their parents bought this, that, and the other. The Bible says when you're looking for leaders, look out among you and find men that are filled with the Holy Ghost. We got a lot of folk in our church that filled with something. They ain't going to hold it Amen. And, 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 and Paul, Paul says if we're going to deal with the problem, if we're going to deal with the issues we have, I'm giving you the solution. You got to long for the will of God. Yes. Number two, you got to be a God pleaser. Yes. Because if you spend your time trying to please folk, you'll be schizophrenic before you know it. You will lose your mind because folk will be with you at six in the morning and they'll be against you at seven in the morning. Yes. And you might ask, how do I know? I know because I'm a folk. <laughs> Y'all know how we are. If it does not go our way, if we don't like it, we'll get mad in a heartbeat. But if we please God, hear me what I tell you. Ty King, he's the only one that's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Somebody ought to know God already knows. He knows what's in our heart. He knows what's on our mind. He knows what motivates us. He knows what is our driving force. He knows if we are driven or led. Cattle are driven, but sheep are led. I wish I had a witness. So, so, so here, here Paul says, from a jail cell, he says, if you're going to be mature saints, number one, you got a long for the will of God. Yeah. You got to say, Lord, you teach me what your will is. Yeah. Yeah. My daddy wrote this song, uh, Keep Me in Your Will, uh, so I won't get in your way. Yeah. Amen. He didn't write it, but he sang that song. Keep me in your will, so I won't be in your way. And we need to desire to know what God's will is. Secondly, we've got to desire to please Him. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We got to desire to please Him. Amen. Because only what we do for Christ will last. Yeah. Yeah. Then third, it's right in the Bible. I hope you didn't close your Bibles. If we're going, if we're going to be mature saints, 
Verse 10, he says that we might walk worthy of the Lord and to all pleasing. But then he says we need to be fruitful in every good work. Yes. God calls for us to be fruitful and faithful. Yes. Amen. That's why, that's why I know God is not concerned how big nothing is. Amen. There are a whole lot of folk they won't give their best until there's a big cry. Right. There are some preachers that don't want to preach until there's a big funeral. Right. Amen. They are excited to get some their ego when there are a whole lot of folk around. But God is not concerned about the numbers we bring. He wants us to be faithful and fruitful. Right. We got too many shade trees in the church. All right. my, my, my. Shade trees ain't got nothing but leaves on them. Come on. Come on. Amen. No fruit. Mm. You know what a shade tree does. Mm. It blocks out the sun. Yeah. The S U N. <laughs> folk get comfortable when they're under a shade tree. Mm. And there are a whole lot of folk, they want to come to church to be comfortable. Yeah. Amen. Right. I, I had an officer tell me, amen, after the sermon I preached, he said, Pastor, I, I didn't come to hear that I don't want to be, I don't want to be made to feel bad. I came to church because I want to feel good. Uh, do, do I have a witness in it? Wow. And I said to her, do you have a washing machine? <laughs> when you put your dirty clothes in the washing machine, it just doesn't run water on it. Hey Amen. It agitates. Right. It aggravates oh, until the dirt comes out. And God wants us to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. He wants us to reprove. He wants us to rebuke. He wants us to commend. He wants us to condemn. He wants us to use God's word as the tool. It's cut sharper than a two-edged sword. And he wants us to be fruitful. Yeah. Too many people that are blocking out the S-O-N. Mm. Amen. Right, Shade truth. And the shade trees observers. Mm. Amen. You got clubs. Amen. Mm. Amen. Like club clubs and, and all, all, all of that. And, and dudes that you're fighting over. Mm. Okay. Amen. 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 Got your own account. I know y'all ain't got that account. <laughs> I will preach it about. Amen. One or two dollar dudes. And, and you fight over that. And, and, and instead, of, instead of leaning and depending on God and doing it his way, there are those that are not fruitful and faithful. I don't want to hear the master after I preach the many years that he tells me to preach. And when it's all done, I don't want to hear him say, depart from me. I want him to say, uh, well done. Thou have been faithful over a few things. And see, we need to learn how to look at this thing. I'm almost finished. Through the lens of God, what we spend our time arguing and debating over is just a little bit. Right. I don't care if you live to be 100 years old, it ain't nothing but a drop in the bucket. <laughs> because one day in his presence mm. is equivalent to 1,000 in hours. Mm. Amen. How in the world are we going to compare time to eternity? Mm. Glory, hallelujah. God has given all of us a little time. He's given us a little time to get our house in order. He's given us a little time to please him. He's given us a little time to be fruitful and, and to multiply. And we need to learn, I told us last night, we need to learn the difference between ownership and stewardship. God just let us put our hands on it. And I pray, you, Lord, let me help somebody. Let me leave an indelible mark in somebody's life. Don't let me die and the only thing they say is I'm going to death. Let me plant some seeds in somebody else's life so that they can press on to see what the end is going to be. Well, thank you all for, for listening to the Sunday School lesson. <laughs> Amen. I got one more thing and I'm going to take my seat. We're going back to Rocky now. Amen. We might stop back over Charlie and Snoop's house. She cooks some beautiful tenderloin. You know? right. I'm just stop back over there. Amen. Tenderloin and lemonade. Get the best mother-in-law. I tell you, father-in-law. Amen. Let me get back to this. <laughs> so, number one, he wants us to be mature saints. If we're going to be mature saints, 
We've got to long to know his will. Yes. Right. If we're going to be mature saints, we've got to be a God pleaser yes. over and against people pleasers. Yes. Amen. People don't have a heaven or a hell to put you right. in. Amen. 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 I told the churches that God is blessing me to serve. I didn't come to make friends. Come on now. Do, do I have a witness here? Yes. Oh no, I came to preach God's word. Right. You can be my friend if you want to. You can be my friend Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, but I'm going to stand on God's word. Because His word will last forever. Heaven and earth is going to pass away, but God's word shall stand forever. So we got to learn to please Him. But then He wants us to be fruitful. Amen. Amen. And then. And, and then I, I bid you good evening, but, but Paul, Paul writes this letter, he gives the solution first, and then he exposes the one that has all power. Mm -hmm. well, he exposes God, he talks about uh, verse 12, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. He has redeemed us by his blood and he has forgiven us of his sin. Amen. You read it when you get home. And this God that does not have a double barrel. Amen. He got five that Paul mentioned right there. Is there a witness here? Yeah. Amen. Let me tell you one more time. Amen. We're partakers of his inheritance. He delivered us from the power of darkness. He translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. He redeemed us through his blood and he has forgiven us of our sins. Amen. Paul says God already knows. He already knows your shortcomings. He already knows what you're grappling and wrestling with. But God has the power to be whatever you trust him to be. Yeah. 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 Amen. God bless you. Yeah. And I hope you have the smiles yeah. upon you. But about a month ago, it was my duty to go and pick up that three-year-old that my wife just had to take out to church to discipline. <laughs> and uh, I went to pick up Ty King. And when I went to pick up Ty King, I went into the daycare and I went a little earlier than I usually pick him up. So he was playing with his little classmates and, and uh, one of his classmates, Carson is his name, Carson looked at me when I came in and he shook Ty King and he said, Ty King, your, your daddy is here. <laughs> Ty King looked up and he saw me and he said, that ain't my daddy. That's wrong. <laughs> we do have a witness. And Carson said it again. He said, Ty King, your daddy is here. And, and, and Ty King got a little upset. He said, that ain't my daddy. That's wrong. <laughs> and then the teacher said to Carson, she said, that's Ty King's granddad. Oh, I hope y'all will hear. Come, come, come lean, lean in a little bit. She, the teacher said, that's Ty King's granddad. And Ty King heard that from the teacher. He got quiet. He was quiet. He was quiet. All the way to the car. He was quiet. He was quiet. He usually asks me for cake when he gets in the car. But this day, he was quiet all the way home. It takes us about five minutes to get home. He was quiet all the way there. And then when we got home and I got out the car and I was taking him out of the seat belt, uh, he looked me in the eyes and he said, bro, are you my granddaddy? <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, yeah, I'm your granddaddy. <laughs> and, and, and Pastor Lewis, the biggest smile came on his face when he found out that day that I was not only his brother, I wish I had a witness in my head. He found out that I was not only his brother, but I'm also his granddaddy. And all that evening, he kept calling me granddaddy, brother. Amen. What's so important about that? He found out at three years old that this black man could serve two roles. And I stopped by to tell Anderson Chapel that the God that we serve, I wish I had a witness in my head. 
that the God that we serve can't serve but two roles. He can serve anything that he wants him to be. Amen. Somebody needs him to be a healer. And they ought to know that there's more medicine in the hymn of his garment. Somebody needs him to be a provider. And you know my God shall provide not some of my needs, but all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Somebody's mother and father, they lift you. But I want you to know that God can be a mother. He can be a mother to the motherless. He can be a father to the fatherless. He'll be a friend to the friendless. Is there a witness in the room? He'll be whatever you want him to be. Moses told Pharaoh that God said, I am that I am. And I want you to know God already knows. He knows what we need. He knows where we are. He knows what we're doing. I know y'all thought of a Santa Claus. God knows when you're sleeping, knows when you're awake. No, God knows everything about us, and he's able to supply all of our needs. Somebody ought to shout, thank God he knows. Thank God he knows. Amen. That's the lesson today. If we are going to be mature saints, amen, we've got to get our act together. I said we've got to get our act together. Got to stop being so childish. Is there a witness? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This is God's house. Amen. Y'all don't know nothing. God owns everything. This is God's house. Got too many that have fallen in love with church buildings and church names, but have not climbed in love with Jesus Christ. God knows. I said He knows. And since He knows, we ought to cry, Lord, revive us again. Revive us again. We know that you know. Revive us again. Amen. Come on, let's stand to our feet and give a great God praise.
Thank you, Lord.
God bless you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Walker, and thank you, Dr. Knight, and uh, Reverend Grant. We thank you tonight for coming and sharing. We thank each of you for participating in uh, congregational singing and everyone that has taken a part tonight. God knows. He already knows. Already knows. Already knows. And so we need to stop trying to fool everybody else. Because everybody else, no one has ever the hell the place to say God knows already. He knows that just what we needed tonight. And I thank Dr. Walker for sharing with us tonight. And I I, I was there and I, I saw, I could see your grandson's look on his face when he found bra it was actually granddad. <laughs> but we thank God for his grace and mercy. And we sometimes... We need to remember to look on our face when we found out that the God, the Jesus, that we have heard preached about all these years, loves us even through all that we have been through. Amen. Last night we heard that even in when even when it, it was itself that we were serving him, he still died for us. Amen. So tonight. I'm just delighted that God knows. If there's nothing else to draw our attention tonight, again, I thank Dr. Walker. Last night, I say that on, we'll get a bit addition on Friday night, and of course, my lovely and kind wife told me last night on the way home, say, you say Friday night. So we'll get a bit addition on Thursday. <laughs> so amen, amen. Thank you, Dr. Walker. And Dr. Walker will give his final remarks on tomorrow night. He's preached hard. He's done Amen. a wonderful job. Amen. So let us rise to our feet. And uh, Dan, we have a song to come. So we have we have to you. Yeah.